Well, hello. Welcome back to the break. Who's ready to talk a little Bellator this week? How about that Ryan Bader? You know, the guy exits the UFC on a two-fight winning streak. He goes to Bellator, immediately wins the light heavyweight title there, defends it once, then goes up to heavyweight, wins the whole dang heavyweight Grand Prix. And what's more, I don't even think he got hit in the face. I haven't been hit this whole tournament. Like in the entire tournament. You know, he beat Mola Wall in 15 seconds, rode Mitrione like a pony, Mitrione's words, for three rounds, then he finishes Fedor Emelianenko in 35 seconds. That's a pretty good run, especially when you're a light heavyweight. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, ah, hey, whatever, it's just Bellator. Ask yourself this, would you rather be in Bellator with two titles cashing six-figure checks, or would you rather headline UFC Fight Night Altoona as just another overlooked also ran? That's what I thought. But can we talk about Fedor? I mean, the dude is 42 years old, just finished his Bellator contract, did surprisingly well by even making it to the finals of this tournament. It'd be great if he called it a career now before he takes any more damage, which, don't kid yourself, he absolutely will. He can't not. You know, look at the way he fights, like it's still 2006. Except the difference is, he's a little older, a little slower now, his opponents are all around just better fighters, and he can't take a punch like he used to. I mean, nobody can when you get that old. It's not a criticism of him, it's just what happens. It would be wonderful, absolutely wonderful, if he said his goodbyes, you know, exited not quite on top, but close enough. Then we could all remember the man and the myth without it being too difficult. So why does it feel like he's probably gonna end up fighting a cartoon character in Tokyo before the end of the year? By far the biggest upset at Bellator 214, though, was Aaron Pico getting absolutely starched by Henry Corrales. I mean, he, he came in early, landed that big uppercut, dropped him, then got a little too reckless. And next thing you know, you're waking up on the floor with your winning streak over. And that is the tough thing about being a guy like Aaron Pico, who's had the spotlight on him ever since he started as a professional in this sport. You don't get to make beginner mistakes, even though you are still kind of a beginner. That's, that's a tough way to be as a 22-year-old fighter. Quick question, though. What is this? What's what's happening here? It's like it's like when you were a kid and you were tormenting your sibling and you'd stand like in the doorway to their room exactly in that posture and they're like, "Get out of my room." And you're like, "I'm not in your room. Technically, I'm in the hallway still." Meanwhile, on Twitter, you think your subtweet troll game is strong? Check out your boy Max Holloway. This is how you do it. This is how you do it, people. This is how you needle, you know, a rival and his cut-rate whiskey brand without ever even mentioning the name of either one. Plus, you probably get some free liquor out of the deal, so that's, that's nice, too. We couldn't give a bollocks.